this is Big Red Bear. I know that is, is shocking, but this is Big Red Bear. Uh, Caleb's grandma gave this to him, oh my gosh, what, seven, eight years ago, and Caleb named him Big Red Bear. I, I know that's hard to believe, but this is Big Red Bear. Now, why in the world would I bring, bring in Big Red Bear? Well, I also bring, brought in uh, a rainbow blanket. This is a tie-dye rainbow blanket, whatever. Why do you think I brought these in today? Why? Because they're comfy. They're comfy. You are exactly right. They are comfy, comfortable. You know, sometimes, sometimes we get really upset. Have you ever been upset? I've been really upset. Yeah, it happens. And so sometimes we need to figure out what gives us comfort. So what, what, give, what, what, what gives us comfort? Sleep. Sleep? Sleep is a really good thing that gives us comfort. What else gives us comfort? What else? Uh, ease of the kids. Of the oh, very good. Yeah. You, does something bring you comfort? Do you, you don't have a teddy bear or a blankie or something? See, sometimes we use a teddy bear. And we can just hug on Big Red Bear, or we can hug on our teddy bear, or maybe we have a dog or a, a bunny or a who knows what we've got. But we can use that as cover. Sometimes we have a blankie. And, you know, I, I know kids sometimes that hold on to their blankie or kind of chew on the corner or, or wrap up in it to get really snugly warm or, or something that way. You know, but all of us, every single person, if you look around the room, every single one of us has something that brings us comfort. Sometimes it's somebody we know, a friend or a neighbor or a spouse or something that brings, and we get to talk with them or we get to, to be with them or we get to go do fun things with them. Sometimes it's something, you know, maybe we have a favorite t-shirt or a favorite, you know, something, and it brings us comfort. Well, you know, there's something else that brings everybody comfort too. God brings us comfort. God is the great comforter. In fact, it even says so in the Bible that God is our comforter. There's a cross, There's a cross up there too. Yeah, and that reminds us of Jesus, who is also uh, gives us great comfort. And it is a marvelous, wonderful time that we get to come and be around friends and family, and we get to have comfort, especially in times that may not be so comfortable out there. You know, maybe we have something that's stressing us out or something that's making us mad or something that makes us unhappy. I know, I know something that makes you comfortable. Something that makes me comfortable? Oh, this could be dangerous. Coffee. Coffee, yes. Coffee makes me comfortable. <laughs> yes. yes, what else? Oh, I see. All right. So just remember that sometimes if you're feeling uncomfortable, find something that brings you snuggles and comfort. And it might make you feel a little bit better. Okay? All right. That's the Lord of my soul. All of my soul. Worship is all.
tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves, where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Oh. and problems and health issues and relationship issues and Lord you you know Lord we've got folks that are hurting hurting physically hurting mentally hurting emotionally we've got folks that are struggling and Lord in this thing that we call organized religion Lord it's falling apart as well we need you. We need you in our lives. We need you in our families. We need you in our community. We, we need you. We need you to help. We need you to guide. We need you to nurture. We need you to lead us. Lord, we, we are so desperately in need. So, Lord, we humbly come before you this day, and we ask. We ask that you fill our hearts and fill our minds and fill our spirits and fill our vessels to overflowing so that we may be who you would have us to be. Lord, we're humbled. We're humbled that through all of our goof-ups, mess-ups, and screw-ups, you still love us. We're humbled that in our shortcomings, you still forgive us. We're humbled that even as we struggle to figure out who we are in your midst, you're still there for us. So Lord, bless us this day and every day. Be with us now as we pray the words that Jesus taught when we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you look in your bulletin, you'll find out that the sermon today is The Spirit of Love, John 14, 22-29. If you look on the screen, you'll find out that that changed. It's been a rough week. Lots of stuff going on. Lots of people hurting. Lots of, of injuries. Lots of disease. Accidents. Uh, lots of stuff. Meetings this week. Just I went and did interviews and, and interviewed pastors. And the, the pain that they're suffering. The shortcomings, the feelings of, of complete and total despair. Pastors who are saying, I'm just going through the motions. I don't really mean what I'm saying on Sunday mornings. It's, it's rough. 
I heard from one clergy person and they've had four meetings in their church duly announced and he was the only one that showed up at any of the four we have stuff going on we're busy we're so very busy sometimes too much so Sometimes we, we feel like our lives are out of control. We, we feel like the, 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 the pressures on us from those outside of us, the demands, are, are just so demanding. I had a lot of flashbacks this past week. When I was a junior in high school, my best friend was killed in a car wreck. These young people on the way back from Vincennes, Davidson just come flooding back into my brain. All the pain from 30 plus years ago come flooding back in. Seeing our prisoners with health issues, struggling to breathe, struggling to stay alive, the memories of prisoners of years past that I've held their hand and watched them go be with Jesus, that I've been called to the homes and watched their suffering come flooding back. I know that there's a spirit of love. I know there is. God is love. The whole incarnation of God is love. God so loved the world. Creation was out of love. God created. If you go back to Genesis, either one. If you go back to Genesis, God created this and this and this and this and this. But it still wasn't complete. And so God created human beings in God's image. So that there would be someone, someone comparable to God for God to be friends with. And Adam wasn't enough. He needed a companion, and so there was Eve. Not for Adam to lead or not for Adam to follow, but from the side so that they would be companions side by side for all eternity. And that's what we're called to do through our spouses, through our friends, through our companions, we're called to be side by side. And so today, I ask the kids what brings them comfort. Because all of this stuff that's going on in the world, I know they've already started studies on the pandemic, and the pandemic, this, this generation that's coming up, they don't want to be within six to ten feet of anybody. Big crowds are starting to freak them out. They're finding all kinds of social and psychological problems in classrooms that exceed more than 15 or 20 kids because it's just too peeply in the classroom. And they grew up with this. They're much more comfortable watching something on a screen than they are to see something in person. And that's going to affect all aspects of life. And it's kind of scary. And so I ask the kids what brings them comfort. And if you heard all their answers, sometimes it's a big snuggly bunny or bear or dog or something fake or live sometimes it's a blanket sometimes it's a parent or grandparent close friend so I ask us today what brings us comfort well when you google comfort found in the bible you come up with Matthew 11, starting at verse 25, and I'm completely and totally 
uh, shocked or met, well, I'm not really because Carrie is awesome. She already has it on the screen. And I don't know what translation I have and what one she has, whatever. So they may not jive completely word for word, but you'll get the gist of it. At that time, Jesus said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Here's the important part. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Have you been weary? Have you been burdened? Jesus offers rest. Jesus offers the best rest and comfort that we can think about. More than Big Red Bear, more than Fuzzy Blanket, more than, than anything or anybody, the presence of Christ gives us peace and calm and rest. In a world where there is very little peace and calm and rest, I know Carrie was talking about Maddie going through a lot of death, and I can't help but think of Caleb. Loss of gam, loss of great-grandma, loss of dog, loss of, of childhood friends, moving around and all the stuff that goes along with it. But then I think of each and every one of us. We're getting to that age where we systematically check the obituaries, make sure our name's not there but we also check for our family and friends. We check for schoolmates, we check for parishioners, we check for community leaders, we, we check. Because the world just seems like it's passed us by. Maybe it's just the fact that I'm over 50 now. You young, young bucks uh, have stuff to look forward to. But yet you've got family and friends that are also struggling and going through turmoil. So I leave you with this. Find your healthy comfort. Now there's unhealthy comfort as well. You'll find that in a bottle of pills or a bottle of booze or in some kind of something online that you shouldn't really be looking at. There's unhealthy comfort. There's comfort in the arms of somebody that you shouldn't be in their arms. There's comfort in, in various things. I'm talking about healthy comfort. Find your healthy comfort. Call your kids. Call your neighbor. Call your pastor. Call that person that has been through the same thing. Maybe you spent a little bit of time in a nursing facility, whatever, and you really made a connection with that guy across the hall. Maybe, just maybe, you were visiting somebody and you made a connection with that, that person you got their name and number from that you met at the spa or the beach or, I don't know, getting your hair done or nails done or getting that petty done. Maybe, just maybe, it's that coworker that also seems like they never have a good day, maybe they're just looking for somebody that they can talk to as well. Find that healthy comfort. Find that healthy comfort. And know beyond any shadow of any doubt that God is always there to offer peace and comfort and to release you of your burdens and your problems and your sorrows. This has been a weird week. 
lots of strange things happening in the world, lots of things happening in the community, lots of things happening in the schools. We need comfort. And God will offer us that rest. <sighs> Let's pray. God, give us peace. Give us rest. Give us comfort. In the stuff that's going on in our lives and those around us, we ask you, Lord, to be involved. For those that are suffering, give relief. For those that are wandering, give guidance. For those that are needing, let us be that answer. For Lord, we are you, you are us, and we're all in this thing together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. <laughs>
peace I offer, peace we search, peace in Christ we find. In a world of turmoil, in a world of pain, in a world of uncertainty, there is certainty in the Trinity that is our God. God will never leave you orphaned. God will never leave you alone. God will always be there no matter what, no matter when, no matter what. So let us go from this place loving our neighbor, loving ourselves, and loving God above all else. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I ask blessings to be upon us all. Amen.